Hello, I'm going to demonstrate you the cross structure of lungs. The surface features, the borders, the surfaces, the visceral relations, and the side determination. This will help you for your YOOC and practical exams. Okay, so now you're seeing here is a two pair of lungs. Both um, both the lungs are from same caliber. This you have to have like see, you know both the lungs from the same caliber so to identify the differences. Okay, it, it's not must in an exam you might have the two lungs from different calibers. But the thing is you have to identify the side and the anatomical position. So here I'm telling you like if this is like what you're catching out of this lung, let's say. You know, first of all, when it's asked like to pick up this lung, you have to hold up this lung in your anatomical position. Uh, anatomical position is one like you yourself imagine that this lung belongs to which side. If it's like you know, I'm uh, you know holding up this lung because this you know I'm telling you is of the right side. I'll tell you later. Okay, first hold, let me lay on. You should hold it such that is in an anatomical position. So you know, this is the sharp anterior border. Right, so if it's a right lung, it will be having a straight anterior border, and the posterior border you can see is smooth and it is, you know, convex rather, and it is ill-defined. It will have the, you know, vertebral impressions. And outer surface, you know, is convex outside. This is having the postal impressions, and this one is the mediastinal surface. Okay, so the same way is like here also. You have to like at least you should have idea of catching out of the lungs. So this you catch it catch out of like this. This is on the left side, and here you have this anterior border. Here you seeing is the notch, and so the apex and the posterior border you can see is rounded and is having these you know impressions with the head of the ribs as well as the vertebral bodies. This is the mediastinal surface. So obviously like you should have to have this idea of right and left lung. Uh, before catching up, uh, hold, uh, catching up in your which side you should hold it. So for that, uh, you know the side determination has to be confirmed. Remember the three important points that you should remember for side determination of a lung. Uh, the first thing you should look the anterior border, right? So the anterior border is very very important because you know in the left side, in the left side, can you see here? This is a notch, right? So this is a notch here. This is of the. This is like one uh, uh, hallmark feature for identifying the left lung, and that's the cardiac notch. So the anterior border from the fourth, you know, this is like you know, if you place it in your medius lung, uh, in the thoracic cage, for from at the level of like fourth costal cartilage, you find is a notch here, dipping down like this. This surface is actually bearing up the pericardium and the heart of it. So there is this cardiac notch, one thing in the anterior border of the left lung, and in the right side, this anterior border is smooth and you know is straight. The second thing that you should find out is the lower end of the anterior border, there will be a lingula. This lingular process you find is only on the left side. Why? Because this is like homologous to the middle lobe on the right side. Okay. The third feature is that in the right lung there are like three lobes. You can see easily there are three lobes, and these three lobes are separated by you have an oblique fissure, which is, is a deep fissure, it goes deep inside, reaching up to the hilum, and then you have is the horizontal fissure. Got it? So that makes it three lobes on the right side. And on the left side, you will have a single longitudinal fissure here that you can see is this is an oblique fissure which is dividing into upper and lower lobes. So you have two lobes on the left side. Got it? So this middle lobe, as you see, this is the middle lobe, this is an additional lobe here, middle lobe in the right side. This middle lobe actually corresponds or more augurs to the lingula on the left side. Got it? So three identifying features are enough uh, for identifying the right and left side, you know, cardiac notch, lingula, and a single longitudinal fissure. Three important points which will help you identify the side of the lungs. Of course, there are differences, many more differences in the higher structures as well, but that will come in your rest part of the viva. Initial one thing is now you have to confirm the side determination is okay and the uh, anatomical position, right? Anatomical position is such that you have this, you know, the 
diaphragmatic surface we should face below because you know uh, lungs are like conical spongy tissues so it has an apex it should be directed upwards these are the ribs impression so this is the lateral surface and the high higher area is the medial surface with that you can you know bring it aligned in an anatomical position like this okay so that was about identification and site determination and anatomical position similarly you can see here also here this one is the right lung why because right lung there are three lobes easily you can see got it and in the anterior border is straight nearly straight you can see as and there is no lingula here so this one is the right lung this left lung why because left lung i told you one thing is look at the cardiac notch cardiac notch although this is a old tissue so that has like you know come not well defined but this lingula you can see here it's prominent here lingula and further here you have a single longitudinal oblique oblique fissure got it so this makes it the left side so that was about side determination and anatomical position now the rest part of the viva now the viva begins such like they will you know after the side determination they will ask me okay tell me what else you know about the lungs so lungs you know these are spongy uh, respiratory organs present into the thoracic cage and they occupy most of the lung uh, thoracic cage in, uh, you know uh, leaving less of space in the middle for the heart so it's short in other ways you can say it's like very well uh, protecting the heart from both the sides except at this uh, you know cardiac notch where it is buried i mean you know pericardium and heart lies below to the sternum at this point okay so then about two lungs you know the right lung right lung is uh, a little uh, more in volume more in size bigger in size and although it might appear differently but you will have to remember what i'm telling and the left lung is longer and little compressed the reason i'll tell you because the right lung you know it, 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 let me tell you the uh, surfaces the borders like each lung is a conical tissue so it has an apex directed upwards and a base like each cone has a base the base is the diaphragmatic surface and this is the you know apical surface then you have the outer surface the costal surface and the mediastinal surface the mediastinal surface is actually divided into two parts this one is the you know this is the costal surface or vertebral surface and this one is the mediastinal surface and the borders this one is an anterior border this is the posterior border now again you can see that posterior border is ill defined because of the vertebral uh, bodies and the head of the ribs you see you can see that the impressions of the head of the ribs and this one is the inferior border so you have three borders inferior border anterior border and a posterior border which is ill defined two surfaces mediastinal surface and the costal surface then apex and the base the base is the diaphragmatic surface so now talking about the apex now apex let me tell you that apex actually is encroaching into the lungs uh, in sorry in apex actually is encroaches out of the thoracic uh, cage and encroaches into the lungs here you find is an impression of the first rib the first rib or lies here so this apex actually you know uh, above to the first rib there will be the clavicle here so uh, you know 2.5 cm above to the medial end you know, of the clavicle Uh, you find is this apex of the lungs both the sides and this apex you know this is an impression you can see here in the first rib so this impression uh, this first rib actually reaches up to the transverse process the apex actually reaches at the level of the transverse to the seventh cervical vertebrae and you know there is this uh, cervical pleura over to that is the cypsus fascia supra pleural membrane winding it up and that you know is an inelastic rigid membrane or the diaphragm of the inlet of the thorax and that's why we, because it prevents the ballooning or the bulging of the apices of the lungs into the neck so that was about the apex and you know apex will also have such impressions you know on the medial side they will be actually you can see here as well as you can see here that the apex on the medial side anteromedial side will have impression for the you know brachycephalic trunk here on the right side and on the left side for the subclavian actually uh, subclavian will also you know brachycephalic will actually branch here and subclavian artery will have an impression here on the apex of both the lungs okay then talking about the base 
Then base, you know, it's the diaphragmatic surface, the whole of the right lung, uh, you know, rests uh, the diaphragmatic surface, rest of the diaphragm and the diaphragm underlying, underlying to the diaphragm is the right lobe of the liver. And because, you know, the right lobe of the liver is a very big uh, lobe and that is, you know, uh, due to respiratory movements also, you know, so because of that uh, liver line below the disc, this you can remember that way that because it's being pushed from inferior surface, that's why the right lung is uh, lesser in height, right? So it's lesser in height, that's why it is more wider, more wider, more bulkier because of the push from below and that push from below is because of the liver. So this remember is and if you push something from below, it becomes more wider because of the limited space in the thoracic cage. Now look here, this lung is on the left side and onto this base under the diaphragm on the left side lies the left lobe of the liver, then is the fundus of the stomach and the spleen, the three viscera lie below under to the left lobe of the diaphragm. So, but those are like, you know, not pushing that much. So what happens is remember that because it has a punch here, it's like, you know, pushing here. What, like, what pushes the left lung more towards the left side is the heart. Because heart, you know, it's one third of the heart that lies on the, uh, on the median, uh, one, one third of the median plane. It lies on the right side and two thirds of the heart lies on the left side of the median plane. So more of the heart pushes or encroaches or you know excavates this lung, the left lung. So there's a big notch here, the big impression. So that uh, that I was telling that uh, this one is getting a pressure from below and that's why it becomes wider. And this is getting a pressure from this side, the medial surface because of the left, uh, you know, heart, the left ventricle. So that's why if you imagine that because of the heart it gets punched or pushed and that makes the left lung narrower and narrower because when it becomes narrower it becomes taller. So this is taller in length, right, more in height and uh, you know comparatively it is thinner but this one will be you know less in height and it will be more bulky. So the volume we are selling in this one is you know in generally in males this right lung is more bulky, it's around 700 grams in males, 700 on the right side and because more of the tissue of the left lung is being, you know, excavated by the heart, so you can remember that around 50 to 100 um, grams of the left uh, lung tissue is lesser in weight. So this is 700, this is 600 to 650 grams, so because of the heart which is taking up more of the space. So remember this one is more bulkier, heavier and wider. This is taller, thinner and is a little lighter in weight. So that was about the two lungs <coughs> and the epices and the, you know, the base, relations to the base. The talking about the suprolateal surface, I mean talking of the uh, lateral surface, this lateral surface, you know, is related to the parietal, you know, uh, it is all covered, you know, the two lungs when they develop, actually, they, you know, they invaginate into the balloons of the pleural cavity. So, the inner surface of the pleural space, the pleura, pleura it actually lines this lung tissue, parenchyma, and it is tethered to the substance of the lung and it even invaginates, you can see down below the white color thing, deep down, you are seeing is the visceral pleura, right? So, this visceral pleura, is you know tethered to the substance of the lungs and it goes into the, you know, the fissures and remember that it is having its nerve supply and blood supply same that of the lungs so visceral pleura is pain insensitive then there is a parietal pleura covering from all the sides and the parietal pleura gets its different names because it's more adherent to the ribs or you can say the rib cage from inside so the parietal pleura lining on the outer surface is called costal pleura. The parietal pleura lining on the inner lower base of the lungs is called diaphragmatic pleura. Similarly, the pleura lining here on the mediastinal side is called mediastinal pleura. And that portion of the pleura which reaches above to the first rib is called cervical pleura. 
got it and remember that the cervical pleura uh, you know is blended with the supra cervical uh, you know pleural membrane that's called Simpson's fascia and the uh, cervical pleura they blend together okay so that was about the pleura now yeah on the outer surface you can easily see there are good impressions of these you know obliquely running ribs these are the ribs impression this is the outer surface and then on the mediastinal surface i was telling that part of the posterior surface a mediastinal surface is the uh, is resting over the vertebra these are the impressions of the body of the vertebrae and the deep impressions you can see these are the impressions of the head of the ribs got it same will be here also you can see here this is the impressions these are the impressions of the head of the ribs these are the impressions of the body of the vertebrae and then what remains is the mediastinal surface now mediastinal surface you know first of all look at the hyalur structures right so the hyalur structures the you know comparative this such question even come in your theory exams so hilum of the uh, you know hilum or the root of the lungs is actually a pedicle uh, pedicle this pedicle actually helps to attach the lungs to the mediastinum and the contents of this you know at, at this point it's this visceral pleura and parietal pleura gets reflected onto each other got it and it is an inverted cigar shaped thing down below is the pulmonary ligament like pulmonary ligament helps to you know uh, you know uh, to vertically uh, lift up and down the lungs during the respiratory movements so that the pulmonary veins can sink into the pulmonary ligament. Okay, now talking about the contents or the structures entering or leaving from the lungs, they are the contents of the high lung. Here you are seeing one thing, remember, <coughs> uh, for a mnemonic sort of or easier way to remember the contents of the high lung, remember B for bronchus, B for back. Back means piche kidaru. Right, so if this is a high lung towards the back, B for bronchus, B for back, you will have the thick cartilaginous ringed, uh, you know, these are the windpipes and these are the principal bronchus. So you can feel it uh, with a, either, you know, with the forceps or with your fingers also, you can palpate that these are uh, thick margins. So these will be the even having cartilaginous uh, rings here. So this is the primary bronchus but in case of right lung you have like it's divided into epartial and hypartial bronchus got it one thing is bronchus then a for artery a for above the next mnemonic is a for artery a for above so what will be lying you can see here in this what lies above will be artery pulmonary artery will be lying above got it and V for vein, but V for vein, vein is like, you know, downwards or, anti, you know, A for artery, A for anterior, don't get confused. A for artery, A for anterior, bhi ho sakta, A for above, bhi ho sakta. so both of them is equally correct. You might find artery sometimes anterior to the bronchus or above to the bronchus. Then veins will be lying down. Remember there are two veins. You have a superior pulmonary vein and a inferior pulmonary vein. So veins will be, you know, either anterior or below artery either anterior or above and posterior you have the bronchus okay then what else what else like in a hilum for the posterior relations will be like you know the nerve the nerve supply to this the lungs is by you know bronco uh, pulmonary nerve plexus and this plexus in two parts you have an anterior plexus anterior placed also as well as posterior placed plexus the pulmonary plexus is one thing then you have a lymphatics from the lungs and the lymph nodes, bronchopulmonary lymph nodes, they will be aligned on the posterior and anterior as well as in the pulmonary ligament. So, and remember the blood supply here. So, right lung is having one bronchial artery, and that bronchial artery is also passing, you know, behind at this level of this bronchus posteriorly, and that bronchial artery from the right lung is from uh, the third posterior intercostal artery. And there will be, you know, bronchial veins. There will be two bronchial veins also. Okay, bronchial vein and bronchial artery. Bronchial vein will be one, bronchial artery will be one on the right side. So that was about the hyalur structures on the right lung and on the left lung, the hyalur structures will be like again the name, same name of mnemonic is that you have the posterior. And one thing you can check out, right? This is another way of checking out the bronchus that you squeeze the lung. 
the right so the first thing from where you'll find the you know air coming out will be confirmatory for this bronchus so bronchus is right you can see here this is the bronchus the air starts coming out from this thing right so this will be the bronchus there's another way of confirming the bronchus but you have two bronchus epartial and hypartial on the right side and on the left side this will be the bronchus right so this is the bronchus right you can see coming up air bubbles so this is the bronchus of the this is a thick wall you can see this is a thick wall structure this is the principal bronchus of the left side and as i tell you a for artery a for above so the artery is lying above right and v for vein one of vein will be ventral you can remember or vein actually lies below but there are two veins anterior and below the two veins pulmonary veins I remember while you're drawing in a theory exam if it's you drawing then artery here pulmonary artery will be drawn blue in color and veins will be drawn red in color this is an important point remember otherwise in general systemic uh, cvs you draw veins in blue and red uh, arteries in red in color but here you're going to draw pulmonary oh, sorry uh, pulmonary artery will be blue in color pulmonary veins will be red in color uh, red in color because they carry an oxygenated blood okay then rest of the contents will be the same you have bronchopulmonary of plexus anteriorly to the hilum and posteriorly to the hilum there will be the difference here now is about the vasculature of the lung the bl uh, blood supply to the lung that here it will be two pulmonary uh, bronchial arteries the two bronchial arteries here you have one bronchial artery on the right side so the two bronchial arteries supplying the left lung will be direct branches from the descending thoracic aorta okay and of course the one pulmonary vein bronchial vein will be here then anterior and posterior bronchopulmonary lymph nodes and there will be lymph nodes reaching into the high or you know ligament pulmonary ligament so those are the differences hilum you can remember the difference one thing is two here what are the two structures that is the epartial and hypartial bronchus so if there are two bronchus here so there are two bronchial arteries here that is the thing which is different you have one you have one bronchial artery on the right side you have one bronchus on the left side you have two bronchial arteries on the left side you have one bronchial artery on the right side okay so that was the hilum now what remains is the visceral relations on the various uh, surface let me tell you here you're seeing is the impression of the heart of course you know the right side of the heart is made completely because of, uh, of the right atrium so it will be the impression of the right atrium and the right oracle that will be related to the right various surface of the right lung okay then what arches above to the uh, high lung of the right lung it's very easy you know it is azygous vein is i guess vein arches over the hilum of the right lung okay then what else as i told you there will be impression of subclavian artery here like this okay then uh posteriorly you know the ribs and the vertebrae they've also been told although behind to the hilum you know that is actually the space for the posterior medial sternum so there will be esophagus running down there right and there will be you know you know phrenic you know what is here actually it's a middle medial sternum heart you know is a condition of middle medial sternum and on to the pericardial uh, pericardium there is the phrenic nerves descending and phrenic nerve will also be passing anterior to the hilum remember phrenic nerve and phrenic nerve is accompanied by two ovates i mean the vessels what are the ovate vessels these are pericardiophrenic arteries remember they are branches of the first part of internal thoracic artery uh, arising from the internal thoracic artery before it enters into the thorax so that is pericardiophrenic artery and phrenic nerve they will be running anterior to the hilum of the lungs and there will be vagus running behind to the hilum right both the sides so those are the structures and the relations which are seen on both the sides here it was above to the hilum remember the deep arch that is by azygous vein now on the left side there is a deep impression here this is cardiac notch the cardiac impression which is formed basically by the left ventricle mainly by the left ventricle of course here anterior it might be the impressions of the left uh, right ventricle as well but remember left auricle also is there on this surface then here you know behind to this arch and above to this uh, hilum is will be the arch of aorta right arch of aorta here and then it's the descending thoracic aorta so remember because it's the descending thoracic aorta which is related posterior to the hilum on the left side so 
esophagus instead of here in esophagus you will not have a good impression here rather esophagus will have a good impression on the right line okay then of course because it's an arch so here you will have subclavian as i already told you subclavian artery will notch this anterior apical surface because you know it crosses the first rib to become axillary artery so you'll find subclavian also here and of course, as I told you, pericardium, what, what runs over the pericardium is the phrenic nerve. And along with phrenic nerve, it will be the pericardiophrenic vessels. They will be running anterior to the hilum. What running behind to the hilum is vagus on both the sides. That exceptional structures now you will find here is the thoracic duct. Remember, in the superior medial system, thoracic duct runs on the left side. But in the inferior medial system, thoracic duct runs on the right side. So somewhere below to this, you know, what actually, you know, is, uh, you know, the sternal angle, at the level of sternal angle divides the superior and inferior medial sternum. So in the superior medial sternum, you will find that the phrenic, uh, you know, this thoracic duct will be related onto the left side. And what else is will be the superior intercostal vein also running on the left side, right, superior intercostal vein. And remember one more thing is this. Re left recurrent laryngeal nerve remember this is the arch right this is the impression of the arch and what arches below to this uh, is the recurrent branch of vagus and that's the recurrent laryngeal nerve which arches below to the arch aorta so that also is a content of superior medicine on the left side got it so uh, left recurrent laryngeal nerve left superior intercostal vein and thoracic duct on to the left lung in the upper portion these are the relations of the left so i think i have taught you enough of the relations and everything regarding the lungs and just have a look here also these are the same structures you can see the air gushing out right these are air bubbles gushing out so you can automatically guess that these are the bronchus right you know epartial and hypartial bronchus this will be the artery above and the two veins below similarly actually it's a dried out tissue it's, in, it's you know there's less of gas here actually it's like frozen thing so these these are the you know bronchus there's a bronchus there's the artery and the two pulmonary veins and bronchial vessels are very minute so you're not able to identify them here uh rest i think all, most of the things I have taught you, both the lungs they have, you know, bronchopulmonary segments. This can be viva, might you know, extend beyond if you are, you know, giving good answers. They might now move on to the theoretical portion. They might ask what is a bronchopulmonary segment. You know, that these are the lobes of the lungs and each lobe they have been divided according to the secondary bronchus into three lobes and tertiary bronchus actually it corresponds. So each bronchopulmonary segment is aerated by a tertiary or a segmental bronchus and each segmented, each segment has its own bronchus, has its own bronchial arteries and bronchial vein and pulmonary arteries. Remember what is intersegmental in bronchopulmonary segments that is the pulmonary voids and these are the planes for surgical resection of the lobes or the segments of the lungs. Got it? So it's done.